Hi, and thanks for watching this training video presented by AeroGuard Flight Training Center. My name is Beth Brown, and I'm a Czech instructor here at AeroGuard in Deer Valley. Today I'm going to talk to you about how GPS operates, its different systems, and its potentials for error. Understanding how GPS functions as a whole will help you understand how your Garmin works. There's three segments in a GPS system to know about. The control segment, which is the ground station. You have the space segment, which is the satellite system. And then the user segment, which is your Garmin or the equipment device. We're also going to talk about RAIM and WAS. We'll get into that in a bit. Alright, now it's time to talk about GPS and navigation. So I love GPS. I learned to fly in an all-glass cockpit myself. GPS provides continuous, accurate, three-dimensional coverage anywhere on or near the Earth's surface. However, I still have an appreciation for the navigation that, our that the first aviators and aviatrices used, and that's pilotage and dead reckoning. Anyone that's made a paper navlog understands how tedious and labor-intensive it can be. Before there was GPS, the first pilots flew this way. These crazy pioneer pilots flew 200 to 400 feet AGL using only a magnetic compass, roads, railways for navigation. During low visibility and night flights, they used bonfires to light up the way, and they still do that for airstrips in Alaska and around the backcountry. Aviation has come so far in the last 100 plus years that now we rely heavily on GPS for navigation. I'm confident you're all familiar with GPS, because you use it on your phones, and your cars, your watches, and of course, in our aircraft. So first, the control segment. It's made up of the master ground station in Colorado Springs, Colorado, USA. And it has six monitor stations around the world. The job of these stations is to monitor the health of the satellites. They perform checkups on satellites twice a day to monitor and predict the satellite's functionality. Next is the space segment, and it's a constellation of satellites, and they orbit 11,000 nautical mile high. So this constellation contains over 30 satellites that orbit the Earth twice daily. Each satellite transmits its position and time at regular intervals, and those signals are intercepted by GPS receivers. This signal is measured in time with an atomic clock. So how long it takes the signal to get there will determine where you are in time and space. An ordinary mechanical clock will not do for this job. So GPS uses an atomic clock. It's the most stable and precise clock, and it can count down to the billionth of the second. The final piece of the GPS system is the user segment, and this is the equipment that receives the GPS signal. For us at AeroGuard, it's our G1000 in the aircraft. G1000s have so many amazing features that make our jobs easier as pilots. One benefit of the G1000 is it helps to alleviate the workload on pilots so they can have increased situational awareness. One limitation of the G1000 is it's only as smart as the person who is operating it. A pilot really needs to understand how their system works and how to use all the information it provides you to have a safer flight. The G1000 system, well, it has its own operating manual. It's about this big and many components that I'll discuss in another video. Now that you understand the components of GPS as a whole, we can talk about RAIM and WAS. RAIM is Receiver Autonomous Integrity Monitoring. Wow, that's a mouthful, right? Well, what RAIM actually does is it monitors those satellites and it determines if there are any providing corrupt information. So if you're receiving 2D information, your GPS is going to need three satellites. And if you're receiving 3D information, your GPS is going to require four satellites. And then for RAIM, if they're going to detect a faulty satellite, it requires five satellites. And for RAIM to exercise fault exclusion, and that's the ability to exclude a failed satellite, RAIM requires six satellites. Without RAIM's capabilities, you would not have the accuracy of the GPS position. So RAIM is pretty much essential for using GPS and IFR flying. And then we have top shelf GPS, which is WAS. Wide Area Augmentation System. WAS gives the most accurate GPS location information. Standard GPS actual performance, it's only accurate to about three meters horizontally. But WAS LPV performance, it's accurate to less than one meter horizontally. Not all aircraft have GPS receivers with WAS capability. 
WAS allows you more options when flying IFR. It lets you have lower minimums on approaches and additional options with alternate airports. I'm going to get into GPS approaches in detail on another video. Well, I hope this helps you understand the magic behind the GPS. Thank you for watching our videos. Please like and subscribe below. Bye for now.